3D concrete printing on Mars? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Hey, my name is Tyler Lay. I'm a professor at Oklahoma State University, and this is my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in, my concrete freaks. In this video, we're gonna be talking to Alexandra Radlinska, a professor at Penn State University. She was one of the faculty members on a team that competed in the NASA 3D printing challenge where they had to print 3D homes on Mars with like Martian stuff. I mean, it's like an amazing story. I can't wait to share it with you, but I wanna warn you for up front, there were some technical difficulties, nothing on Alexander's end, all on my end. The video of mine got corrupted, it didn't work out, but it's okay because her story is awesome. She's got some really cool details, how they overcome some major challenges and did a an amazing job and got second in the NASA challenge. Pretty cool. Hey, make sure you check it out. Alexandra, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Welcome everybody, this is Alexandra Dnitska. I'm an associate professor at Penn State doing research in concrete. Penn State received second in the NASA 3D printing challenge. Congratulations to you and to your team. What an amazing accomplishment. Can you tell us a little bit about the contest? Give it an overview. How does it work? What was it all about? Thank you so much. This was a, a really extraordinary journey, so to speak, and a great learning experience, mainly on how important teams are. I've personally have never experienced the importance of working with other people, working with other disciplines. And I think our students also often are trained within their discipline, within their domain. And that was an eye-opening experience, how we can shift the boundaries and we can shift the current knowledge when we have a group of people working together. So it was an extreme challenge. We were always at the last at the last minute with our deliverables, trying to test concrete on Saturdays and Sunday nights just to meet the objectives and the deadlines for the competition. But we made it. That's awesome. So now you were supposed to print um, a, a Martian home, is that right? How does that work? The, the competition consisted actually from several phases and from several levels. So we joined when the competition was already going. We didn't start from the first from the first entry. By the time we got our team together, we were already behind few steps, so to speak. So we had to catch up on the missing deliverables and then stay on track. And it started with a simple quest of, you know, this will be a NASA, a NASA, uh, a NASA shelter or a dwelling on a habitat, but start with the beam, start with the cylinder. And from that beam and from that cylinder, we kept scaling up, making it bigger and better until it was a habitat. That's awesome. So what was it like to have your team um, in the finals? And did any anything go go crazy there, or was it just all smooth sailing? Every, every stage of the competition was crazy. <laughs> every stage of the competition was a challenge we thought we're not going to be able to make. But then at the last minute, all the efforts, all the efforts to plan out and, and paid off. So actually, we never printed the habitat before going to Peoria. What? We did not have enough time, materials and resources to try it out ahead of the game. So we packed all the two robots. By then we had two robots already. So we, we packed the two robots and the hopper and the materials and the mixer and everything else needed, all the computers, on a big trailer track, haul it for 12 hours from Pennsylvania to Peoria, Illinois. We unpacked, we got it all set, and this was our first run, and it was successful. <laughs> oh my gosh, so, so it went totally smooth, you didn't have any problems at all? Nothing at all. Maybe a little glitch of the software expiring <laughs> oh <my laughs> halfway, gosh. Through, halfway through the competition, so yeah, there, there were some hiccups. So the software expired as we were printing during the competition, the robot stopped, but we were able to manage, we were able to manage, we took a small pause and we resumed. And uh, at the last minute, or the last, at the, the right towards the end, uh, the habitat was completed. That's really cool. Well, so I'll tell you what, all great teams are, even if, even though they have great plans, are challenged. And I think that just speaks a lot to what your team was able to do to overcome that. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. You obviously must have built some, a very strong bond with them. So well, it's, 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 it's an interdiscipl interdisciplinary team. So, so this was so nice to see that people think differently, that they have different approach, that our point of view is not the only one. It was a great experience and we still work well together, so. 
Okay, so so tell me a little bit more about the team. I know it's not just civil engineering. I, I think there's architecture, mechanical. Tell me a little bit more about how all this came together. We have architects, architectural engineers, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, design experts, and all of us are needed. We cannot move this effort without everybody's input. That's awesome. That's really cool. And and um, so how did you get started? How, how, how did you organize it? What was the responsibilities? How did that work? So the believer, the main believer behind our project are, are Sven and Jose. Sven, for who is a department head in Setup, which is the design, school of design, and it's a complex name. But um, uh, Jose joined the School of Architecture, and he's the director of Stackerman Design Studio. And I think one of the greetings, welcome to Penn State parties, Jose met Sven and mentioned to him how he always wanted design rockets. So a few days later, Sven came back to Jose and he said, you can make your dreams come true. Here's your challenge, here's your project. And at that time, Jose knew Shadi. I worked with Shadi before, I knew Sven. So uh, we, we, we all got together with Ali and Nick and we thought, we'll give it a try. We will use some of the resources we have some of the passion for extraterrestrial construction, and we, we will give it a try. And state by state, we, we were able to complete. That's really cool. So it started with the faculty. You started thinking about and, and saying that this would be a great challenge. And then, so how did you get the students involved? It wasn't that difficult to get students involved because NASA, NASA work carries the excitement and the opportunity. And it's been a humanity dream for so many generations to, to go into extraterrestrial space to conquer the sky. Yeah, so totally. the students, the students bought it right in, and, and actually they were the, the main motivator, the main driver for, for our efforts. That's cool. So no, no, um, I know um, you guys developed a 3D concrete uh, printed mixture, which which we'll talk about coming up, but, but how did your robots work? What, what was that all about? Tell me a little bit about those. Well, here comes the, the great beauty of interdisciplinary team. It, the, the robots work as they do in mechanical engineering aspect. Actually, our robot was purchased secondhand. He was probably making uh, cars in Detroit before. And then we had experts that knew how to program the robot. We had architects design the structure. Then we've got, they would design it and, and, and tell the robot to analyze the design and slice it into a robot language. And that robot would print and work with the material that we would supply. That's really and cool. And it all looked smooth at the end, but there was a lot of hiccups on the way. <laughs> I bet. No, that sounds amazing. Now, let's talk about the concrete mixture itself. So um, what was the biggest technical challenge in developing your 3D printed concrete mixture? The challenges were multiple, including the, the, the ever-changing facts that we know. So when the competition started, the material had to be mimicking an in-situ Mars resource. So we had to create a Martian Crete, Mars Crete, and we actually trademark our mixture design. So the mixture we developed was actually with geopolymer, like with a basaltic aggregate with minimum amount of water, just a small amount of the activator. And that's the that's the mixture we used for printing the beams and the cylinders in those initial stages. But then the news came that there was water discovered on Mars. Well, so, so in the middle of the competition, they like just changed and said, hey, we have water now? We, they discovered water. We thought we didn't have water on Mars. Now we know we do. So the competition's rules have changed too because it That's had awesome. to be in situ That's material. So, cool. so we realized that if we can use water, the, the point system for the competition will actually work towards our advantage if we work with the material we know better. And we know better, we know much more about Portland cement-based materials. So we switched to a Portland-based cement mixture and we actually worked with a um, commercial supplier because it was already close to the deadline. We were right before the competition, so we worked with a commercial supplier that gave us a large amount of the material that we could use and 3D print. That's really cool. Thanks to them, right? I mean, and then and I guess they're they're leaders in the in the 3D printing world. Then that that group, huh? I think we have a lot of leaders in 3D printing world. We we have all the pieces and components we need to start using robots and print. It's just the technology doesn't, that our civil engineer, maybe materials knowledge, doesn't know the robotic aspects just yet. And it's all about just the linking the I few agree. missing pieces. That's awesome. So what was the biggest non-technical challenge for your team? The biggest non-technical challenge was to actually acknowledge 
how how much of the help we need from the other aspect. So we would be working on our materials and the mechanical engines would say, well, we need your material to flow better. And we would say, okay, that's three months from now. And then we would say, we need the robot to move a little differently. And they would look back and say, well, that's three months from now. So we learned very quickly to appreciate how much the other fields are bringing to our field. And yet how simple our work may seem to people that do it for every day. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so cool. That's so, so insightful and, and true. So um, you guys made some big breakthroughs in 3D printing. And, and, but what breakthroughs do you think still need to happen for it to become commonplace today in our industry? I think the breakthroughs are happening. As we are speaking, there's probably yet another startup company developing a 3D printing equipment or 3D printing mixture. It's a, it's a flowing, flowable mixture, so it's not nothing new in our industry. Just the fine-tuning of deposition process, especially in a large scale. But there's a lot of scientists working on a small scale and the rheology aspects of these mixtures. So this is happening. We will see the robots coming much, having much stronger presence in our industry and our civil engineering a field that has been traditional and very stable for a few decades, I think we'll see a huge boost right now which is great for our students. We will have jobs, they will have good jobs. That's a great news for everyone. No, that's so exciting. So finally, do you have any other messages that you'd like to share with my audience? Any parting words? I would like everybody to stay excited for for the work we are doing because civil engineering will see a great boost and our materials engineering is reaching out to the sky and to the moon and Mars and maybe beyond. So this will be great for civil engineers to not only plan terrestrial infrastructure, but also start thinking about developing an extraterrestrial context. Uh, very, very well said. That it's so exciting. Let's 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 aim for the stars because I think that there's bright days ahead for civil engineering. Wasn't that great? Whoa! I love that story. Hey. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment below. Are you working on 3D printing? I know I am, and I can't wait to share with you what we're doing next. Please tell me what you're doing and what you hope to see 3D printing can do in the future. Take care, everybody. Bye.